Achieving Environmental Resilience by Professor Yehuda Kahana. The last 30 years have seen the rise of a post-industrial economy, an economy marked by new underlying rules based on limitless data and information flow. This is contrasted with the previous assumptions of our economy based on limited labor, capital, and land. Our current capitalist economy does not have true competition. It also lacks a fundamental accounting for natural resources and their pricing. Things such as water, minerals, societal issues, forestry, animals, and what is commonly known as the commons. The post-industrial economy has significant non-monetary elements. These non-monetary elements should be combined with current economic theories by approximation if there are no exact models. In 2015, all the nations of the world agreed on the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs, as the most crucial issues facing humanity that need answering by 2030. These goals include environmental and social goals such as climate action, water, zero hunger, no poverty, reducing inequality, and more. We have less than nine years to reach these goals. The global sum of money to reach the SDGs is approximately 8 to 14 trillion annually. The global governmental budget is closer to 30 trillion. The ability of governments is constrained by the need to fulfill all the government's roles. The private market and corporations are not willing and are not equipped to do this job because global GNP stands at approximately 100 trillion. This is insufficient to close the SDGs gaps. The government's regulator should raise substantial amounts of capital through a differently fully balanced sustainability budget. This can happen by reallocating investments of the private and business sector, approximately $350 to $400 trillion worth of capital. The regulators have the power to provide incentives to support and enhance a process in which the private sector plays a significant role. It is the power to shift the entire consumption pattern towards saving natural elements and reducing waste. The business sector measures impact by economic or monetary values but the government should account for damage and profit to the environment, to society, and businesses. The majority of externalities are non-economic values, they're non-monetary. Every economic activity has both positive and negative effects. National accountants can distinguish between activities that harm the society and environment and those actions that benefit society. The sums of capital accounted for will be enormous. This is called a sustainability budget, which can be more or less balanced. Governments will charge taxation on the negative side and pay rewards or subsidies to those on the positive side. Things that can be taxed on the negative side are things such as fossil fuels, unsustainable transportation, consumption of meat, pesticides, construction, pollution of water and oceans, paper, deforestation, clothing, construction, or even warfare. Things that could be subsidized are things that save energy, save water, waste, recycling, cradle-to-cradle -cradle technologies, renewable energy, etc. The regulator should distribute subsidies within the capital markets to pensions and insurance, as well as social security systems, those who specialize in mid- and long-term financing, mainly through long-term bonds with a national guarantee. This bond will carry a linkage with the cost of living and should be untradeable. The yield of these bonds will be substantially higher than regular bonds, especially under the current zero interest by the central banks. The ability to offer a high yield on impact investments will create a self-perpetuating cycle. Higher returns on retirement plans will increase the attractiveness of such schemes and the public propensity to save for retirement. This in turn will motivate larger long-term savings and thereby enable to finance more impact investment. The re-establishment of retirement security for millennials and future generations, providing for appropriate accretion of real value on retirement savings. In summary, we suggest a four-step solution. Promote financing of the SDGs in order to save our existence on the planet. There is no way to solve the problem with the same tools that brought us here. Given the emergency, there is need for top-down education to bring about the incorporation of externalities, meaning non-monetary values, in conjunction with economic ideas, essentially applying environmental, social, and consciousness values alongside our economic metrics. A sustainability budget to complement a national budget and underlying national accounting measurement systems. This will enable to change the production and consumption of the world to be more optimal. We must hit several ambitious targets with a single arrow, fighting climate change, 
SDG financing, safeguarding pension for millennials, and enhancing job creation.